So let's see how to replace uh, the start relay. It's very difficult. I did use a tip of an exacto blade, just the tip, very, very sharp to undo the small connectors which have a locking pin and it's crazy difficult to undo unless you know how to do it. So this tip, very important. Watch your fingers. This is really very sharp and you may also need, I suggest you already have a tiny screwdriver with a round tip, maybe one millimeter, no more than this, you will need to push into a hole. It depends how the connector is installed. I'm going to show you in detail, but first I suggest you let your uh, unit unplugged at least several hours, three, four hours or more to discharge this 220 volts capacitor, which appears to be small actually is way powerful it's going to give you a powerful shake i did got once and i can tell you i do remember it now first this cover it's very stiff and very strong plastic very strong ideally you want to insert a flat screwdriver and lift this piece a little bit to disengage there is a, a bump inside to disengage from this metal hole this is all metal at the bottom it's also metal do not try to remove it from the bottom first is not going to work it has two uh, bumps here which are not removable you need to disengage it from the top and my advice is actually to insert maybe you can tell this is the bump that locks into that hole insert underneath here find an angle like this a flat screwdriver a strong one insert it here in uh, on top of the metal piece and try to force this piece of the plastic up like this force on it it's not easy because there is absolutely no space to insert that flat screwdriver try not to uh, slide it and damage these tubes here these are sensitive be aware of this don't bend them don't crush them and i suggest don't put it back all the way in because it's going to be the misery the next time we are going to try to remove the start relay here what you want to do is again be sure there is no more voltage maybe measure it get the multimeter you want to wiggle this thing here gently do not force do not pull and force on it you are going to damage those small pins so just gently it looks like it doesn't want to come out but wiggle wiggle and be be patient it's going to slide out it has two holes at the top engaging in these two pins if you need to replace the overheating relay is the same idea it has one hole here which goes on the top pin so there's three pins one top and two of the bottom now before you undo any connectors be sure you take pictures note down which one goes where but let's look at our bad guy here it's not easy to film this with the light camera space is very tiny what i did is this one being a three a three connector uh, start relay i did note the wires go where because the connector has you see for a replacement one okay. the connector if you look here sometimes it can be very small but you will have numbers you i don't think you will see the camera i can tell you this one three it goes like this four let me see again on this guy okay so it goes like this this is the no con uh, no pin it goes four three one two so one two three four i did mark down for my connector this is just my unit i did mark down and i did say that three is the single blue two is the brown this one go to the capacitor one is the double blue i call it double blue because it kind of uh, redirects to another uh, connection okay let's go for the insane part of this video these connectors 
may be inserted in two ways, either like this with the back towards you, and this is going to be the easier to remove. This one too is back towards you, this one is face towards you. They are all three the same, but you need to remove them differently. So, one thing to be aware, when you wiggle them, this wire here is not strong, so try, whoops, that's my camera, try not, try not to rotate this wire so you don't break the wire here, then you have another problem, so be gentle, it's not very solid. Okay, let's try to get this one, or maybe let's try to get this one here, I'll try to do it, it is better if you have a helper to help you, you pull the pin and someone else is keeping the connector, otherwise it's going to be difficult. So you notice there is this hole here and this connector has actually a metal pin that's entering the hole and it's locking it from releasing. And what you need to do with your strong tip of screwdriver, it has to be, you cannot do this for instance, for example with a needle, it's not going to work at all and you may puncture your finger, so careful. You need to press down with quite some force and at the same time pull the connector. That's why it's difficult to do with one uh, person, but I'm going to try, let's try. I'm going to push on the screwdriver like this. Let's try, and maybe I can pull, but you need quite some force to push down. I'm pushing at that angle too. Okay, I think it, no, did it work? No. Let's try it again. Or maybe try to push with the finger and lift it at the same time. Yes, this is better. Lift uh, with this, the thumbnail, lift the underneath the connector and I think it removes. Yes, there you have it. This is the beast. And also, obviously, you need to uh, lift this uh, plastic jacket cover. Okay, let's try the two others. And want to point out, maybe look at the image here. So we have sort of a, let's try to find an angle to find this, okay, maybe better. You have sort of a three tabs here, a bottom one, a middle one, and the top one. The middle one is the one with the pin. What I did is just push this plus, a metal tab strongly backwards to have this pin release from the hole. Now, these two guys are the opposite way inserted. So what I'm going to do instead of pushing on the pin, I'm going to pull on this center metal tab, lift it. And by the way, I suggest when you lift it, what I suggest to do, be careful with this. So what I'm going to do with these guys, I'll show in a second. Be careful again, uh, don't uh, blood uh, uh, don't uh, remove too much blood from body, just insert like this, this is what I'm going to do with these other guys, insert the tip and just lift this horrific pin, useless pin, this is horrible, why the engineers are putting these pins, it's useless, there's really not enough vibrations to, uh, to have them disconnect by themselves, actually this is done at the manufacturer, just to be sure that the tired and the exploited Chinese worker doesn't forget to clip it all the way in, doesn't, you know, so it's just for ensuring that it's properly mounted, basically. So you may want just to force on it like this and just bend it back and maybe, maybe next time, you can actually insert it both ways, it doesn't matter, but maybe next time it is no longer going to clip in there. Let's try it. I think I did deform it, yes, I did deform it a little bit. Okay, maybe next time it's not going to be clipped and it's going to remove much easier. You will save yourself uh, more extra pain. Let's just go for the two others. Okay, so again, the tip, careful with your fingers, right? So what I did here is I have the connector pushed in all the way to the bottom. So now I can guess, I don't need to remove this layer. I can guess that this about this is the first the first tab so about at this point here it's the space between the first and the second tab so I just going to insert the tip like this 
it's not going to get too much because it's bumping into the metal pin just insert it and then lift it and you will feel it did capture that middle tab with the with the bump and actually it moves almost by itself it may be less uh, easy for you again i was saying when you have it like this hanging by one wire do not rotate it too much you will break the wire inside here you get another problem let's try to lift this on you see i already did it so again insert and fill the tip hooks on that middle middle tab and maybe it's going to be more difficult for you because i already kind of still stuck in there i already kind of forced that tab bent back so it's no longer that strong but it does come out so uh, these are the guys you want to get the replacement part i think they are pretty much all the same this is the story what actually is the problem and i want to point out there are people who say on forums they actually did took the old relay and they managed somehow to push back this two locking pin they removed the cover and there is a copper disc inside that actually just wears it burns off where it makes contact and they say that copper disc they could rotate it to place a new portion of the disc under the contact and just keep the relay going on for two more years it's the part that has two functions start the compressor and stop it when this part fails there is two scenarios if the part fails when the compressor is running it means the compressor will not stop it will run normally this compressor and this uh, small uh, is like a hotel fridge it runs normally it's on for 25 minutes when when everything go, goes well it runs for 25 minutes and it goes off for 40 minutes when this part is going to fail if the compressor is running at that moment it will not stop and will keep running for hours the compressor will overheat the oil inside will overheat will degrade at the moment the oil will degrade the rings on the piston is just like a small piston like in a car uh, engine the piston will start wearing off which means it will no longer have the compression to cool down the fluid i think it's going to uh, it needs to increase the pressure in the fluid to cool it down that's just uh, if you want uh, pv equal rt or something like this that's just physics so the power of compression will drop at that moment and the compressor will need to work longer to compress the fluid to cool down the refrigerant so when this happens basically the compressor starts wear down very fast for instance if the compressor will run maybe for uh, one day 24 hours or two days non-stop it may just be already kaput if you manage to get it to notice in time that it has been running for a few hours you, you notice at some point why it didn't stop at all it's supposed to stop after 30 minutes if you manage to catch it in a few hours of running maybe it's not too late also when you put your hand on it when it's running for several hours it's going to be hot burning hot normally it gets warm quite warm but if you feel it's hot it has been running for too long or it's already worn down a lot that oil is no longer able to cool it down so this is the scenario when the, the small piece fails while the compressor is running the other scenario uh, at this moment also you have this overheating relay this may also fail it depends if it gets too hot the compressor gets too hot at that moment this part will fail and the compressor will stop so if that happens you need to replace this part and this part i think i have a spare for that one they uh, this is the overheat relay it looks like this usually you can buy them together on uh, aliexpress they are five dollars together on amazon obviously are going to pay five times more uh, so 
if the uh, compressor overheats too much, running for many, many hours, this part will also fail, so you need to replace both this one and this one. If you catch, a, if you manage to stop the compressor while it's still running, being very hot for many hours, this part it should it should still be good. Uh, so you need to replace just this relay. Now the second scenario is the relay fails while the compressor is off. So basically, uh, the unit tries to start the compressor, the relay fails completely, compressor doesn't start. That is the very best scenario. All you have to do at that point, replace this tiny piece. So if you replace it and it doesn't start, then go ahead and replace the top one. Maybe it's the scenario where it shut off by itself and you didn't notice. I'm not sure if it's clear enough for my story. So. My, my suggestion is really buy the two parts together. Don't replace this one if it's running, but just keep it for spare. But just perhaps buy the two parts and uh, see. start by replacing this one and maybe if it doesn't start, replace the other one. I think this, this is the much shorter story, but I just tried to give you an idea what can happen when this fails. Either the compressor will not restart, either it will start, uh, will hit up and you notice it's running for too long. Either it will run for too long and this part also will fail and then the compressor will stop. And then it depends for how long it did run, the compressor may be worn out or not. When you replace these two parts, this is when I'm finishing, when you replace this one or both parts, just time the compressor. First start is going to run longer because it needs to cool down the fridge from warm, but just time the compressor maybe the next day. If it's running for more than 30 minutes or so, if it runs for 40, 50, 60 minutes, then it already has a lot of wear to it. It's going to cost you more money and perhaps it's going to fail at some point the complete compressor itself. But you may keep the freeze for a while at least. So, Okay, uh, this is, I think I went through, this unit had all about, mm, I think four years or so continues working they know very well is not going to last too long that's uh, i think it's called it obsolete design or something like this that's the truth of the market thanks for watching